Ever looked for a shop made shelf pin hole jig that's fast, easy, and accurate to use? Well, I'm going to show you one that's all of the above. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. Today we're going to be taking a look at a shelf pin hole jig that I designed last year and it's really been working well for me. I build a lot of custom cabinets and I need something that's fast, easy, and accurate to use. I've used a lot of different commercially made and shop made jigs over the years, uh, drill press based, router based, and just a hand drill as well. And this uh, jig system is by far my favorite that I've used. It's really uh, quick and easy to use, and when time is money, that really matters. So basically, the jig consists of two main parts. Uh, the first one being a base plate for your router. Now it's just a piece of half inch thick Baltic birch and it has a quarter inch shelf pin set into the back edge of it that's sticking out by half the diameter. Now that pin registers into a series of half holes along the edge of another piece of plywood and again it's half inch Baltic birch and uh, so that makes it really quick and easy to slide the router along rather than have to lift it out of a hole and find a new hole uh, with uh, guide bushing based systems. So basically to set it up I have a center mark uh, on the jig and what I do is take the height of the gable that I'm working with in this case 29 and 3 quarters take half of that so 14 and 7 eighths and measure from the center mark 14 and 7 eighths to the stop block. Now that stop block always registers to the bottom edge of the gable that you're working with. The way that I use to keep that straight is I'll mark what each of the gable pieces are for which, which cabinet box they're for on the bottom edge so I know that the, the edge with the writing on it is always the edge that that stop block registers against. So to set it up I have two setback jigs <clears throat> and they're marked one inch and two and a quarter inch setback which is what I typically use depending on the depth of the cabinet. So in this case it's two and a quarter. So they just clamp on referenced on the front edge and then the jig registers against them and slide it along until the, uh, the stop block on the end meets the end of the gable and then you simply clamp the jig down. Now I use my multi-purpose table for this uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one is the clamping is a lot easier. You can put the clamp through any of the holes on the top uh, to make that process quicker and also the dust hose arm on the side takes the weight off the, uh, the dust extraction hose for the router so it makes a really good setup. If you're interested in more information on the multi-purpose table and how you can build your own, you can click on the I above and that will show you the video for that as well. So I clamp it down on both sides. And then the setback jigs can be taken off. Now what I usually do is mark the range of holes that I'm going to be using. So in this case I've counted in five holes from top and bottom. Now where that is laid out with the center mark that makes it even top and bottom so the top hole will be spaced the same as the bottom hole. And I just use a piece of masking tape to mark which one I want to start and stop with. Uh, so that it's it stays straight and uh, rather than using pencil I'd like the masking tape because then it doesn't get kind of muddied up over time. So I'll route one set of holes and then to do the, uh, the, the back set of holes then you simply take the clamps off, flip the, uh, the gable around and then take the jig and flip it over. So this, this guide block references either way that you have the jig so that's really where the accuracy comes in with this. So I'll quickly go through uh, the process that, uh, that I use to make uh, the various components of the jig, starting with the base plate. So like I mentioned earlier, the base plate is just a piece of half inch thick Baltic birch. 
um, and it's whatever router you're using. Like I said, I, I like using the uh, the Bosch Colt just because it's small and, and compact and really convenient to use for this application. Now I do have the base plate set up for my bigger router as well, so there's both sets of holes on the bottom. So to make the base plate, I start out with a piece of, of square plywood and uh, mount the router to it, kind of get the, the router as, as parallel to the back edge as possible and get that uh, screwed on. Once it's screwed on, then plunge down through the base, making a hole completely right through. And then at that point, you can lay out uh, the hole for the quarter inch shelf pin at the back exactly square. So referencing the back edge and that hole that you just made straight back square and the distance is going to be determined by the size of your, your router base plate and how far back you need to come. So once you have that hole laid out, which is going to be in from the edge, you want to, want to drill a complete hole, not the half hole. Um, drill that right through and then rip that back edge off so that you end up with just an eighth of an inch or the radius of the hole left over and that's what the shelf pin will fit into. So once you have that hole in and the back edge trimmed then you can go ahead and, and trim the front to whatever profile you want. And then I just use uh, just your typical metal shelf pin jig or sorry shelf pin uh, the L-shaped kind and uh, cut off the uh, the lower half of the L so that you're just left with basically a plate and the pin and that gets set in with epoxy into that half hole that you've created and just be careful if you get epoxy squeezing out that you get that wiped away before it sets up because you don't want that affecting the fit of that pin into the half holes in the main part of the jig. So for the main part of the jig, uh, it's again just simply a piece of half inch Baltic birch. I like Baltic birch because it's got hardwood uh, plies to it, so it's, it's a little more durable and it's going to wear better than, than a plywood that's got softwood core to it. So start out with a piece that's wider than what you need and, uh, and lay out your row of holes. Now I space them an inch and a quarter apart, you can make that to suit whatever you like to use. Uh, so lay out uh, at an inch and a quarter each of those holes along the length. Now you need to take your time with that and make them very accurate. Uh, but the nice thing with this jig setup is if, if some of the spacing is a little bit off between them, everything will still line up because you're still referenced to that bottom edge all the time. So if, if the distance between two holes was a little off, it's going to be consistent through all four of the holes on, on the two, uh, two gables that you're working with. Now, the key thing is having them all exactly in the same line. Now, I use the drill press to do that and just set up a, a fence on the drill press so that the back edge of, of the board rides against the fence to keep everything in exactly the same line. And then you just use a brad point bit to, uh, to drill out each of your, your holes at the marks that you've laid out. So you've started out with that wider. Now, you can leave as much as you want there. I usually leave about an inch or so. Now once you have all your holes drilled, then you need to rip that so that you end up with again just the eighth inch or the radius of, of the hole left over. Now what I do is, is cut that a little oversized the first time so we have a little bit more than half the hole left and then take the base plate that you've created for the router and just test fit it and just creep up on that so that you get a perfect fit so that when the long edge of the jig registers against the uh, the edge of the plywood there's no slop within that uh, within that hole so that assures that everything is stays accurate so with that reference edge on the base plate that keeps everything sitting square as you register into each hole so the stop blocks that i made they're really simple uh, this is one of the setback gauges so it's just basically a piece of half inch Baltic with a little quarter inch uh, Baltic cleat on there that rides on the edge and slides back and forth and I just have my two and a quarter and my one inch marks. Now that needs to be calibrated with uh, the depth of, of the base plate that you go with for your router so you need to, to calibrate that so that uh, when this reads two and a quarter, that sets the jig to the proper distance so that your holes are actually two and a quarter from the edge. So that really depends on which router you use and what size you make your base plate to. 
Now the, uh, the stop for the main jig, I just used a little C-clamp on that, and that is just a piece of half inch Baltic with a piece of quarter inch on each face just to create that channel there. So that slips over the edge of the jig and will ride back and forth and the clamp just pinches that in place so that it, uh, that it locks on. So, uh, so everything is, is pretty basic uh, to make but uh, works really well. So that gives you a good idea of how my shelf pin hold jig works. Now like I say, I've been using it for about a year now and it's really worked well for me, by far my favorite uh, method. It's quick and easy and accurate and when time is money, all of those things really count. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave some comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.